us, amen, as a part of the body of Christ. And I believe that God is wanting us to understand that he also deals with the church as he did with the children of Israel, amen. Israel, God is still married to Israel, uh, amen, and we are the bride of Christ, amen. And so God has given a parenthesis of time to deal with the church now, and then after he has dealt with the church, Amen. And he has raptured us out, got us ready, and taken us home uh, to glory to consummate the marriage. At the marriage supper of the Lamb, God will begin to uh, fulfill, as I say often, that 70th week, prophetic week of the book of Daniel, the prophecies of Daniel concerning Israel. Amen. And so we're looking forward to uh, how God is going to speak to us as we approach the end of the church age. Amen. And the key word is repentance and prayer. Repentance and prayer. And uh, amen. I may not get to the prayer part until the next message, but we just want to share that with you. In the book of, uh, amen, Psalms 85, very familiar passage of Scripture. Would you stand in reverence to the reading of God's Word with me? Amen. Covet your prayers. Hallelujah. That God will touch my mind, give me clarity of thought, and that He will touch this body. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of uh, Psalms, chapter 85, verse Four. Let's start at verse 4 through verse 13. The word of the Lord says, Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again? that thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. Amen. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring forth of the earth, out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. Hallelujah. I want to minister to you on the thought, turn. Amen. It's a message on prayer and repentance. And y'all all know that I've been studying, amen, the book of Zechariah and the teachings of Doug Small. And so some of those thoughts and uh, that's just gotten into my spirit. Amen. And I believe God is, amen, trying to give a prophetic message to the church. Amen. Just as God was using the prophets to speak to Israel, God is using men of God and women of God to speak to the church, amen, and he's trying to call us to a place of turning, to a place of repentance, to a place of prayer, to a place of consecration and communion and deep fellowship with him. And so this morning I want to preach to you on that thought, turn, amen, and the key to turn is repentance and prayer, repentance and and prayer, amen, it's a message on prayer and repentance, and we'll do, deal with repentance this morning, we just stretch your hand this way, pray with us, pray for us, Father, we love you today, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand before your people, I thank you, Lord, for the reading of your holy word, I pray, God, that thy word, as I ministered this morning, would find lodging place in each of our hearts, God, that it would build our faith uh, into a most holy faith, that we may honor your name, uh, Everything that we do in every place that we go, God, help us to exalt uh, the name of Christ. We ask, God, that you just have your way in our midst. Uh, let your will be accomplished. Holy Ghost, uh, would you raise a standard against the enemy, God? Uh, hallelujah. Would you give us liberty, Lord, to proclaim your word this morning? Uh, Lord, would you let the hearts and the minds be open uh, and receive the engrafting of your word today, O oh God? Uh, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would anoint thine servant. Uh, touch me right now, Lord, from the crown of my head uh, to the soles of my feet. Use me as thine instrument uh, for your glory, for the edification of the church, uh, and for the glorification of your name. And we'll be careful, God, uh, to give you all the praise for what you accomplish in the next little while. It's in Jesus' name we humbly pray. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated, but don't sit down on the preacher. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Make it easy to preach this morning by helping us. Amen. But I do feel a heaviness. I don't know if y'all feel it, but I feel a heaviness on the service today. But I want you to know that we serve a God that is able. We serve a God that can do anything. And I'm telling you, you might be looking at some adverse uh, circumstances or situations in your life. But amen. We serve a God. Uh, amen. That is able to help us. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that he wants to lift that spirit of heaviness and clothe us with the garments of praise. Hallelujah. He wants us to understand that we can be a people of praise. Come on, amen. I know we're a people full of problems and amen uh, situations, but I'm telling you, we serve a God that is a problem solver. Hallelujah. Amen. He can do anything but fail. Can somebody say amen? I said God can do anything but fail. Uh, hallelujah. We're looking at uh, the book of Psalms, and the, the psalmist, amen, is crying out in prayer for revival. And in the midst of this prayer, uh, he is showing unto us what it takes and what is needful and necessary in order for God to turn his judgment and his wrath away from us. Amen. And that is a heart of repentance. Hallelujah. And so we're going to deal with the, the thought of turn in the Old Testament as it speaks about repentance. Amen. And looking for renewal and restoration. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning we're going to deal with the, the thought of repentance uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that this afternoon if the Lord permits Amen. And maybe on Wednesday night we'll finish this uh, message dealing with prayer. Hallelujah. But God wants us, amen, to turn. And as we take a look uh, at the psalmist, that is the cry in his prayer to the Lord. Uh, amen. Requesting a revival. Amen. He's saying, Lord, if you will just turn us, oh God. Uh, if you will turn our hearts back to you. Amen. And that's what I want to focus on this morning is repentance. Uh, hallelujah. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 through 6. Uh, amen. We see this and then Joel chapter 1 and chapter 2. I want to pick out some of the verses here that are applicable to this message uh, and to the hour that we're living in. Amen. To help us uh, to understand the importance of our repentance. To understand uh, the importance of our hearts being turned to God. Uh, amen. Come on, we live in a time where, uh, amen, society and the ways of the world are pushing us uh, to focus on ourselves. Amen. To become self-centered uh, instead of Christ-centered. Uh, amen. But if there's ever a time that we as the church, as the body of Christ, uh, needed to get our eyes off of ourselves and get our eyes on the Lord, uh, it's the day and the hour that we're living in. That's why the Bible said in Hebrews, uh, let us lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Come on, amen. Hinder us. Uh, amen. It changes our focus. Uh, come on, when we're in a spirit of error and we're doing wrong, amen, we begin to focus uh, on ourselves, and the devil wants to point out all our faults uh, and our failures and our shortcomings, uh, amen, so we become more self-centered. Come on, amen. But the Bible says lay aside the weight uh, and the sin that does so easily beset uh, or hinder us or change our focus uh, and let us run the race that is set before us. Uh, Amen. Looking unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Centering on Jesus. Uh, focusing on Jesus. You know what causes us uh, to focus on the Lord? It's our worship. Hallelujah. Amen. We ought to worship the Lord. God uh, is a spirit and he seeketh such uh, to worship him in spirit and uh, in truth. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil does not want to, uh, amen, to cause you to get focus off of yourself uh, and get focus on the Lord. Uh, he does not want you to worship God uh, in spirit and in truth. But if I were you this morning, uh, I would give the devil a black eye and I would call the devil a liar and I would say that God is worthy of my praise. Uh, he is worthy of my adoration. Uh, he is worthy. Hallelujah. And I'll repent of my shortcomings. Uh, I'll cry out unto God for forgiveness. Uh, I'll seek the face of God and turn from my own wicked uh, and evil ways. Hallelujah. And cry out unto the God of heaven that hears, amen, the cry of his people and will heal the brokenness of their heart. Hallelujah. I will worship God in spirit and in truth. Can somebody give him praise in his house this morning? Hallelujah. 
Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 says behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day amen listen of the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord hallelujah amen the spirit of Elijah is going to come upon ministers amen I believe that God is going to do this amen concerning Israel during the end of tribulation maybe the last three and a half years even those two prophets are two men that will come and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ during the tribulation primarily to the Jewish people amen but I also believe that the church is living in a time like Israel amen where we have drifted away from the Lord and God is calling us to a place of repentance because God is ready to pour out his glory upon the church God is ready to manifest his glory to the world God is ready to amen demonstrate the words of Christ, uh, amen, greater works than these shall ye do because I go uh, unto my Father, amen, God has not changed, uh, but I'm telling you as we say it often, God will not bless uh, over a mess, come on, amen, until uh, we repent and get right in the eyes of God, uh, amen, thank God for his grace and his mercy, uh, amen, his grace and his mercy is reaching out unto us, uh, but it is us, uh, it is you and I, we must return unto the Lord and that's what Malachi was saying to the children of Israel uh, and what the spirit of Elijah is saying uh, amen through the men and women of God unto the church of the living uh, God hallelujah amen he'll send that spirit of Elijah in verse 6 the Bible said and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children uh, to their fathers uh, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse uh, amen in so many words God is simply saying there needs to be a turn. There needs to be a return. Amen. Just like he's crying out unto the children of Israel to return unto him through the major and the minor prophets. Amen. God is putting the spirit of Elijah upon us because we're on the verge, on the brink of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is time for the church. At least we find ourselves, as I'll talk about a little bit tonight, amen, caught up in the cares and the affairs of this life and we find ourselves not rapture ready. Come on amen but Jesus is coming back for a church uh, without spot wrinkle blemish any such thing uh, amen and if you and I plan to escape uh, amen the fiery judgment and wrath of God uh, as he primarily deals with the children of Israel uh, during that seven year tribulation period uh, if you and I as a church want to amen take advantage of that great escape uh, who is the Lord Jesus Christ being found in Christ uh, amen spotless and blameless uh, amen the uh, claiming the righteousness and the sanctification and the holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We must return unto the Lord. We must turn from our own wicked and evil ways and we must turn unto the Lord Jesus Christ and cry out from hearts that are broken and that is the message amen from Elijah. Amen. That's the message of Malachi. It's the message of Joel. Amen. It's the message of Pastor Creel. It's time that we turn back to the Lord. It's time that we get our focus off of self. It's time that we get our focus off of the things of this world. It's time that we get our eyes set upon heaven. It's time that we set our affections on things that are above. Amen. It's time that we get our eyes back on Jesus and lift up the Lamb of God. For he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I know he's speaking of the manner of death that he would die upon on the cross uh, but I also believe it has practical significance to the church uh, if we as the church would lift him up in the way that we live uh, lift him up in the message that we speak uh, amen if the world would begin to see the Lord Jesus Christ uh, high and lifted up come on amen even in the church house uh, amen and out in the highways in the hedges uh, amen if it gets noised abroad uh, that he is in the house uh, if he is lifted up uh, he will draw all men unto to him can somebody give him praise in his house this morning hallelujah thank you Jesus 
And then Joel in chapter 1, various verses, 1 through 4, 13 through 15, and 19 through 20, amen. Here is the results of disobedience and rebellion, amen. And then in chapter 2, uh, uh, amen, there's a cry to repent. And we'll look at this in just, uh, amen, a little more depth here, amen. So Joel is simply saying the word of the Lord uh, that came to Joel, amen, the son of Pethuel, uh, he said, hear this, ye old men, uh, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. Uh, he said, hath uh, this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Uh, he said, tell ye your children of it uh, and let your children tell their children uh, and their children their generation. Uh, amen. What what should we tell them? What is Joel trying to talk, uh, talk to us about? Uh, amen. Well, here it is in verse 4. He said, tell them that which the pommel worm hath left hath the locust eaten uh, and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten uh, and that which the canker worm hath Left, left uh, hath the caterpillar pillar eaten. In other words, uh, amen, tell them about the judgment of God. Uh, tell them about the wrath of God. You know, all we hear today mostly in the, in the pulpit is about the love of God. Uh, amen, but I'm telling you, he is a God of love, uh, but he is also a God of wrath. Uh, he is a God of judgment. And Joel is trying to say, uh, amen, you elders tell the younger generations, uh, amen, that God is a God of love, uh, but he's also a just God, and he's a God God of judgment, hallelujah, amen, and so the cry is simply this, he declares, uh, awake, hallelujah, he, he cries out, lament, uh, he says, be ye ashamed, amen, he says, gird yourselves and lament, hallelujah, and then he says, sanctify ye a fast, uh, in other words, Joel is saying for the old men to tell the young generation, uh, it's time to break your hearts open uh, unto the Lord, uh, and cry out unto the Lord from a heart uh, of repentance, and I just to turn unto the Lord hallelujah amen listen why amen this is the only way to turn amen away God's wrath and God's judgment amen from us come on amen God will send his judgment instead of becoming a movement as brother Clay was stating amen we'll become a monument because we're constantly looking back into the things of this world because we're constantly looking within ourselves we'll find ourselves becoming Amen, a monument just to be torn down by the devil. Uh, amen, but I'm telling you, God does not want us uh, to be a monument. He wants us to be a movement for the glory of God. I said, God, uh, he wants us to put our hand on the plow uh, and don't look back, uh, but keep pushing. You might say, brother, I'm pushing, uh, but I'm barely moving. Keep on pushing. Uh, you might say, brother, I'm up against a rock, uh, and it seems like I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I'm pushing with all my might. Uh, I'm pushing this plow with all my strength. Well, brother and sister, keep on pushing. Come on, something's gonna break. Something's gonna give way. I'm telling you, as you're pushing that muscle, amen, that spiritual muscle, that faith is being built up into a most holy faith. And if you keep on pushing, if you keep on trusting, if you keep on praising God, if you keep on worshiping God, amen, that faith is gonna become so strong and so mighty that no rock and no root that is in the way uh, will stop you from plowing on forward. Uh, I said you can plow on forward. Can somebody give him praise in his house? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. So he's telling them to, look at verse 13. He says gird yourselves uh, amen and lament ye priests, and how ye ministers of the altar. In other words, your leaders, ministers, pastors. He says, gird yourselves, lament. He says, how ye ministers of the altar. In other words, intercessors, all believers. We are called to stand in the gap. We're called to make up the hedge. And he's simply telling us that we need to come, amen, and lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God. He said, for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of our God. It's as it was in the days of Nehemiah. Come on, amen. People are falling, people are falling short in their tithes and in their offerings. 
Amen. People are not worshiping God like they used to. Amen. People are not coming to the house of God. Amen. Are you understanding the house of God is being neglected? Amen. So the reason of this, amen, is going to bring the judgment of God. And so he's calling those of us that are leaders and those of us that are laity, amen, to come and linger all night in the altar and cry out unto the Lord. Amen. Least God's judgment comes. Amen. But if we will turn unto the Lord, then God will turn from his judgment and God will send us a blessing instead of a cursing. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. And so he says, sanctify ye a fast and call a solemn assembly. Amen. Amen. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. He said, alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Amen. As the destruction from the Almighty shall it come. He said, O Lord, to, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee. He said, for the rivers, amen, of waters are dried up. Now they're overflowing here. Amen. Amen. And the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. In other words, God simply saying, amen, if you don't turn through the man of God, if you don't turn, I won't turn, but I'll send my wrath and my judgment and because of your poor decisions and your lack of wisdom and just following after knowledge, amen, he said, I'm gonna send some severe consequences, amen, because of your sin, amen, you will face the severe consequences, amen, due to the judgment of God, amen, except you turn to the Lord and cause the Lord to turn, amen, from passing his judgment upon the land, hallelujah, and then Joel chapter 2, he goes on and he says again, he says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in the holy mountain and let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, why? He said, for the day of the Lord cometh, he said, be careful because God's day of judgment is coming, I'll tell you, judgment must first begin at the house of God and you and I are living in a time where God is just like in the early church with Ananias and Sapphira and others amen who rebelled against the Holy Ghost who resisted the Holy One of Israel and God sent swift judgment we're living in a time now at the closing of the church age where God is going to send judgment but I'm telling you we can cry out unto the Lord and God will turn that judgment into hope God will turn that judgment into a blessing can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. So Joel is saying, listen, he says that all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh. He said, I'm sending you a warning, amen, that God's judgment is coming. Hallelujah. Judgment is on the horizon. Amen. It is nigh at hand, he says. A day of darkness and of gloominess. I'm telling you, here in America, there is a, a judgment of God that is lingering on the horizon. Amen. As it was for the children of Israel and as it will be during the time of tribulation. Amen. I'm telling you again, it's, there's historical pre, uh, reverence. Amen. Reference and there is prophetic reference and there is practical reference. Or, or significance. Are you with me? Amen. And so the prophet Joel, amen, he's got the spirit of Elijah upon him and he's trying to cry out to the people to turn back to God. Amen. Because the Lord's judgment is coming. It's a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. Amen. Notice this, that darkness, he says, is a great people and strong a great people and strong the Babylonians led Judah into captivity amen and I'm telling you Russia Gog and Magog amen during the time uh, right before tribulation and at the close of tribulation uh, the nations of the earth will come against Israel amen but also I believe there's practical significance concerning uh, the church the body of Christ uh, and the Lord is about to send his judgment uh, upon the land I'm telling you amen everybody that names 
the name of Christ is not a Christian, amen, and God is gonna separate the goat from the sheep. Come on, amen. I said, God, amen, the ax is gonna be laid at the root of the tree, and the tree, amen, wherever it falls, that's where it will lie. He said, let the righteous be righteous still. Amen, let the, uh, amen, the unrighteous be unrighteous still. Are you with me? Amen, hallelujah. So God is about to send judgment. God is about to separate the righteous from the unrighteous, the holy from the unholy. He's about to send his judgment, but I'm telling you, amen, there's an opportunity for hope, hallelujah. There is an opportunity for hope. He said, the fire, it devoureth before them and behind them the flame burneth. And he may just be talking about World War III and the first phase of the Battle of Hamangog as I preach, amen, through the years, amen, in the reign of the false, amen, peace under the Antichrist system, amen, with here talking to the Jews. He said the land is as the Garden of Eden before them and behind them is the desolate wilderness. He said, yeah, and nothing shall escape them. Amen, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Amen. Listen, he said, like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. Now, hallelujah. He said, and as a strong people set in battle array. Now, is this a normal natural army or is this an angelic or a demonic army? that will come against the people of God. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. And if we, we've read and we've ministered and talked about end times and the battle of Hamangog and this three-phase war and so forth, uh, amen. And so uh, I believe some of this is talking about the natural army and what Joel is seeing uh, from the Lord uh, is how that Gog and all of his allies will come, Meshach and Tubal, I believe Russia and other nations will come down through the mountains against Israel and think an evil thought to take a spoil or get some oil, uh, amen. And, and so that's a judgment that's coming right before the tribulation period, maybe right before the rapture of the church. Uh, you and I might face some of this World War III. Uh, amen. And, but I'm telling you, also I believe it's a picture of something going on in the, the spiritual realm. Amen. And we'll talk about this later. Amen. But I believe that there's, and I, let me just show you from Revelation uh, what I'm talking about. In Revelation it talks about during the time uh, of tribulation that not only are there going to be natural forces, uh, but there's going to be supernatural or spiritual forces. Uh, amen. That'll work. I'm telling you, if God would just pull back the curtain and let you see what battle is really going on. Amen. Like the prophet with the servant in the cave when he said, alas, master, we encamped about with the host of the enemy and we won't survive in so many words. But the prophet just says, Lord, open his eyes and he began to declare why there are more for us than there are against us. As he looked up into the mountains, into the heavens, he saw the angel, angels of heaven, the host of the Lord's army. Are you understanding what I'm saying? saying, amen, there's a natural and a physical battle, but there's also a supernatural and spiritual battle or warfare that is taking place, and I'm telling you, if you, if you ever saw the opportunities last week uh, that the devil tried to take you out, uh, but I'm telling you, the angel of the Lord came and stood in the way of the devil's plan, amen, I'm telling you, and God sent uh, the host of his angels uh, to encamp round about you, uh, to shield you from the tricks uh, and the tactics of the evil one. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. There is a natural and a spiritual warfare that is going on. Can somebody say amen? There's a threefold battle. There's an inward battle. There's a physical, natural battle. And there is a supernatural, spiritual battle that we're facing every day. Can somebody say amen? I'm telling you, that's why it's going to be prayer and fasting. Amen. Prayer and fasting. Amen. We'll break the yoke and the bondage of sin. Amen. Some things will go out but by prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. If we'll look in the, the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 13, amen, through verse 21, it gives us a picture of this horse army. Amen. Hallelujah. That 
that Joel no doubt was taking a look at. Uh, and verse 13 it says, And the sixth angel sounded, uh, amen, and I heard a voice from the, amen, the four horns of the altar, which is before God. Notice that the four horns of, horns of the altar is a place of consecration. It's a place of prayer. It's a place of communion. It's a place of de devotion. It's a place where you get in the closet with God. Uh, and if you're in the closet with God, God begins to reveal his secrets. Uh, and we see the prophet or John the revelator receiving prophecy from the Lord. Uh, amen. As he's stealing away in the altar in the presence of God. Uh, amen. God begins to reveal the secrets unto him. Uh, amen. And Joel, no doubt, uh, had prophesied concerning this. Uh, and also John has grabbed a hold of this prophecy. Amen. That God is revealing to try to turn the heart uh, of the fathers to the children uh, and the heart of the children back to the fathers. Uh, amen. The heart of God the Father to us. Uh, and our hearts back to him. Are y'all with me? Amen. So it has different significances. Amen. God is trying to turn us back unto him. And if we'll turn to him, he'll turn from his wrath. He'll turn from his judgment. And he'll leave us a blessing. Can somebody say amen? So John is getting a revelation. He said, I heard a voice from the, the four horn, horns of the golden altar, amen, that is before God, saying to the sixth angel that had the trumpet, he said, loose the four angels. These are spiritual forces. Amen. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of men and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand amen and I heard the number of them and thus I saw the horses in the vision amen and them that sat on them amen now listen notice the connection now let me help somebody out here Joel had a vision of a seating army of horsemen coming against the children of Israel and now John the revelator who is a part of the church amen he also has a vision of this invading army of horsemen are y'all with me? Uh, amen. So I'm telling you, amen, it's not just the New Testament uh, that is for the church. Uh, amen. But the whole Bible is, uh, amen, for the church. Hallelujah. Amen. As Brother Clay was trying to say this morning, uh, we have examples from the Old Testament, uh, but there is practical application in the New Testament, uh, and the whole Bible is for us, uh, and we must rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, and Jesus said, search the scriptures. Uh, he didn't say search, uh, amen, the letters of Paul. He didn't say search uh, the New Testament. He said search uh, the scriptures because they are they uh, which testify uh, of me. I'm telling you, Jesus is seen uh, in the tabernacle as sure as he's seen on the cross. Uh, and Jesus is seen in the Old Covenant uh, as sure as he's seen in the New Covenant. Uh, I said he's seen in the Old uh, Testament as much as he is seen uh, in the New Testament. Uh, amen. It is Christ concealed uh, and Christ revealed. Uh, and when we rightly divide the the word of truth uh, and we search out the scriptures uh, we find that the Lord is speaking to me uh, hallelujah I said the Lord is speaking to us uh, amen those that are of the faith hallelujah and so here it is that John uh, is receiving revelation from the Lord uh, and he sees this exceeding army uh, and he said out of their mouths issued fire uh, and smoke and brimstone uh, and by these three was the third part uh, of men killed uh, amen in the fire and and by the smoke and by the brimstone and that issued out of their mouths for their power is in their mouth and in their tails amen for their tails were like unto serpents amen they had heads amen and with them they do herd and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues during the time of tribulation where God is primarily dealing with the Jews amen listen and God is sending judgment because they have not fully turned back to him amen but now he he says, listen, uh, amen, even all this judgment, uh, even all this cursing, uh, he said, yet repented not of the works uh, of their hands uh, that they should not worship devils uh, and idols and gold and silver and brass and stone and 
wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. In other words, they're still worshiping idols. Amen. They have not turned unto me even though I sent chastening. Amen. And tried to turn them back to me. Yet they failed. Amen. To cry out unto me. They failed to turn. They failed to pray. They failed to repent. Hallelujah. He said in verse 21, neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication and nor of their thefts amen so Joel got a picture of God's judgment John gets a revelation of God's judgment let's go back to Joel chapter 2 verse 10 the Bible says the earth shall quake before them God will send an earthquake amen the heavens shall tremble and the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars, including the sun, shall, it didn't say including the sun, but I'm throwing that in because it is a, a star, amen, amen, shall withdraw their shining. There's gonna come a time of solar and lunar eclipses, amen, hallelujah, and NASA is uh, telling us about the future events of these happenings, amen. Are you with me? But even if they didn't, God can still do what he wants to do. Can, I, can somebody say amen? I said God can cause the sun to stand still. God can cause the sun to back up. Come on, amen. I said God can do whatever he chooses to do. He's the creator of it all. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. It belongs to God. It belongs to God. Now look at, uh, in light of all this prophecy that is to come, Joel exhorts this to the children of Israel. And I believe this is the message God is exhorting through the Holy Ghost to us. He says, listen, amen. Verse 12, he said, therefore also, what? He said, therefore also, now. Look at your neighbor and tell him now. So Joel, in light of this, this uh, amen, this warning, this warning that God is sending through him as a word of prophecy of judgment coming, but he says, therefore also, now, saith the Lord. Turn. Do what? Turn. When? Now. Hallelujah. So he says, therefore also, now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments hallelujah in other words don't just say it with your mouth but mean it from your heart hallelujah he said in turn unto the Lord amen your God for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil or the judgment. Are you with me? Amen. He said, who knoweth if he will return, God will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him. Amen. So Joel is simply saying there's judgment coming. But if you'll turn to God, he'll turn. He's already pronounced judgment. He's already given a word of prophecy. But I'm telling you, if you'll turn, if you'll repent, then God will repent of the judgment. Are you with me? God will change his mind. He will extend to you mercy. He will extend to you grace. Amen. He will extend to you kindness. Hallelujah. It repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind you? even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Amen. So this is our hope for revival. Come on, the church is in a place just like Judah and Jerusalem was or Israel was. Amen. We're in the same place. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Here in America, and I'll share this a little bit tonight, uh, but in America, I'm telling you, the church is growing in third world countries uh, and people in the unreached people groups are receiving and accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, but there is a famine in the land of America of hearing from hearing the word of God. Uh, amen. There's a falling away from God. Uh, amen. The apostate church is growing 
going by leaps and bounds, but the true bride of Christ is shrinking 12, amen, I believe 12 to 13,000, maybe 15,000 churches are closing, amen, every year, and I believe these are people that truly are trying to serve the Lord, hallelujah, because we notice that those that are really following after the Lord are usually smaller congregations because the bigger congregations are the result of compromise, amen, and, and lengthening the cords, amen, and giving into, amen, the ways of the world and trying to build new carts and set up new types of worship and new types of music and the Holy Ghost has been replaced by the drum beat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. In the moving of the Spirit of the Lord and as He would fill the house with that Holy Ghost smoke in times of the past. Hallelujah. Now they're trying to put man-made smoke in the sanctuary. Come on. Amen. If God don't put His smoke and His train in the church house. I don't want to be in the church house where man-made smoke and man-made lights are being made manifest. Come on, amen. We don't have to work this thing up. We don't have to create a new card. I said the same presence of God that fell for David and the men of old and women of old. He's the same God today and God can still do what he's always done and if we'll just turn unto the Lord, he'll turn unto us can somebody give him praise hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus amen he says gather the people sanctify the congregation this is what they just did at Washington D.C. this is what I did on the 26th of September and many pastors throughout the land we opened the church for a time of turning back to God but only few of the body of Christ take advantage are you with me Amen, in local churches, but thousands went. Thousands went to Washington, D.C. Amen, are you hearing me? But I'm telling you, God is looking for genuine repentance. He's looking for the people to turn back to him. He says, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders and gather the people. Amen, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Amen, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of the closet. Amen, Psalms 85. Amen, as we read there, he says, listen, turn God. In other words, will you revive us again? Will you turn back unto us? Amen, in verses four through six, the psalmist in Psalm 85 is crying out, out to the Lord and asking God to return unto us. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want a manifestation of the glory of God to the measure. Amen. That people can't drive home. Amen. We got to have designated drivers. Amen. Because they're drunk by the power and the anointing of God. I want the world to say as they did on the day of Pentecost. Amen. These men are drunk on some new wine. Hallelujah. Amen. This is, amen. Not uh, These men are not drunk as ye suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. God said in the last days uh, he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Uh, come on. Amen. He said he would pour out an early rain uh, and that was Pentecost uh, and a latter rain. Uh, that's the day and hour we're living in now. Uh, I said God wants to pour out his spirit once again. Uh, I said God wants to pour out uh, his spirit once again. Uh, if we'll make up our mind as they did uh, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, after the 10 days of prayer and 10 days of fasting. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Nowadays, we have 10 days of meetings and only 10 minutes of prayer and we expect an outpouring of the Spirit of God. But in that day, they had 10, amen, days of prayer and fasting and a 10-minute, a 5-minute sermon, maybe even a 3-minute sermon. Amen. And I'm telling you, the Spirit of God fell and the people said, sirs, what must we do to be saved? Can somebody give God some praise hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah so he said we need to cry out spare the people O Lord give not thine heritage to the reproach that the heathen should rule over them he says wherefore should they say among the people where is their God you know in America that's what they're saying where is the God of the church I'm telling you atheists now are using the satanic Bible and satanic prayers to lead meetings and government meetings. Come on, amen. I'm telling you, Christians are walking out. It used to be they would walk out because the majority was Christian. 
Now in the government positions, the majority of Satanists. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And they don't want you to mention Christ or, or use a Holy Bible, King James Version Bible. Amen. They want you to use the Quran or the Satanic Bible or, or whatever they use. Amen. You understand? Amen. And I saw that, amen, where they were talking about it on the news in a brief caption, amen, of how some Christians walked out because they would not be a part of that little prayer service over the meeting that was about to take place. But they were invoking Satan to come into the presence of their discussions and to help them in their decisions. That's the place we're living here in America. Amen. I'm telling you, God is tell the church uh, it's time to rise it's time to stand up uh, for such a time as this uh, as I stated because 54 million evangelical Christians failed to go to the polls uh, and vote hallelujah amen and we wonder why things are going in the direction they're going uh, but I'm telling this because uh, we have failed to stand up uh, and be bold for the cause of Christ hallelujah he is calling us back uh, to a place uh, of repentance can somebody say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, listen. He says, here's the hope. He says, yeah, the Lord will answer and say unto this people, behold, I will send you corn. This is verse 19. And wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the people, among the heathen, if you'll turn to me. If you'll turn to me. Amen. If you'll call that solemn assembly, if you'll pray and fast, I thank God for the church. I see, amen, the women are coming together some on Monday nights, I believe every other Monday night when there's not Bible study, Bible study every other night, every other Monday, and then prayer service on Thursday, prayer service on Friday. Amen, that does joy to the pastor's heart. I, I believe God is pleased with this. Amen. That tells us that we're hearing what the Spirit is saying. Amen. It's time to return. It's time to, to cry out unto the Lord. It's time because God, amen, he's going to send judgment. But I'm telling you, amen, there is hope for revival. I said there is hope for revival. And that's what he's saying, amen. He said, I will, I will amen, the Lord, he said, I'll answer you if you'll cry out from a heart that is broken. And I'll send you corn. I'll send you wine. I'll send you oil. Amen, you'll be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. He said, but... I will move far off from ye the northern army, or the, the army that is coming for judgment. My judgment that I'm allowing, my judgment that I'm sending, I will hold it off if you'll just return to me. Amen. He said, I'll drive him into a land barren and desolate. Goes on, amen. He said, be glad then ye children, verse 23. He said, of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Come on, amen. In other words, he said, I'm going to pour it out so much. It's going to be like the first, but it's also going to be the latter. Are you with me? Amen. He said, I'm going to pour out such an abundance of my blessings and my spirit. Amen. He said, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will do what? He said, I will restore Will thou restore us again, O Lord? Yes. Amen. Amen. God is saying, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. He said, My great army which I sent among you. He said, And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. He said, That hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Amen? So listen. Now, along with the World War III, the beginnings of that, Ham and Gog, when the Antichrist is going to step on the scene to create a false peace, the church is going to be raptured out. They're going to have to try to explain it away. Are you with me? He says, shall come to pass afterward. Amen? After you repent, verse 12 through 14. After you repent, he said, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons, this is our hope, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens. Uh, in those days will I pour out uh, of my spirit. He said, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. That's what God wants to do. This is what God wants to do. Amen. He's going to do it historically. 
He's, he's done it historically. He's going to do it prophetically. But he wants to do it now with the church. Are you with me? He wants to do it practically in our lives, individually and with the church. Amen. He said, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. He said, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. He said, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. And we know this will happen. Amen. During the, right at the close of tribulation, during the time of tribulation. Amen. He said, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come, which is when Jesus puts his feet on the Mount of Olives and he comes back in Revelation 19, 14 with the host of heaven's army, the saints, amen? He said, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now think about the scripture and the prophecy Joel here. It has historical significance. It has prophetic significance. But it also has practical significance. Are you with me? Amen. God is calling the church here in America to repent. God is calling us to turn back to Him. Amen. He is calling us to turn back to Him. Can somebody say amen? I said God is calling the church to turn, hallelujah, amen somebody get Psalms 85 quickly Psalms 85, amen, that's alright I got it here amen, it says turn us turn us O God of our salvation and cause thine anger toward us to seize wilt thou be angry with us forever wilt thou draw thine anger to all generations Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Hallelujah. God wants to turn. The musicians come around. God wants to turn. I'm telling you, it almost looks like we're just going to go into World War III and the rapture is going to take place, but I believe God still wants to send a revival. I said, I believe God's, we've had little winks of it, Come on, amen. We've had little, little outbursts of it. I'm telling you, God wants to send a great revival. I'm telling you, when Peter preached, amen, he, he prayed and fasted with everybody else uh, for 10 days, and he preached for just a little while. 3,000 souls were saved. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, amen. Now we've got Facebook. We've got YouTube. We've got the Internet. When we preach, we could reach all over the world. Are you with me? Hallelujah. And so I believe that God's wanting the church to turn unto him so that he will turn and leave us a blessing instead of judgment. Amen? God doesn't want judgment to come upon his people. But I'm telling you, if we're living in rebellion, if we're living in, in disobedience, God wouldn't be God if he didn't chasten us because that means he doesn't love us. God said he loves, he chastens those that he loves. He loves us. For God so loved the world. Amen. Amen. God loves us. Hallelujah. And in Christ we're the apple of his eye. He's concerned about us. And God wants to bless us with his favor. Amen. But until we turn to the Lord, he will not turn. Amen. The prophet Malachi and Joel are simply saying in their message, as minor prophets, if the people of God will just turn to the Lord, God will turn from his wrath and his judgment. Amen. I've seen people face the wrath and the judgment of God. I've seen where God gave opportunity for repentance. Amen. And they took advantage of that for a little while, but then they just went back into those things. And now some are in prison today. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in bondage. But I want to stay free. Those whom the Son has set free are free indeed. Would you stand with us? Hallelujah. We appreciate the opportunity to minister this word this morning. I know it's probably deep. Charlene's probably going to say, well, what did this mean? And what did this mean when she gets home? Amen. I didn't understand it all. Amen. Hallelujah. You might feel that way, but I'm telling you, if you just study it again, read it again. Read it again. Simply saying God wants his people. He wants to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers. And in that likeness, God, our heavenly father, 
wants the heart of his children to be turned back to him so his heart can turn to us. And instead of bringing his judgment, he can bring his blessing. Are you with me? Amen. That's what he's saying. Amen. I know this. these are of prophets and they're talking to Israel, but it's in the holy canon of Scripture speaking to us as the bride of Christ too. Amen. It has practical application. Historical, prophetic, yes, but also practical. God is telling us. Amen. He said, look at the Scripture. Search it and see what we need to do to have the favor and the blessing of God. Amen. Do you want the favor? Do you want the blessings of God? Amen. You're the one that holds the key. You're the one that holds the key. He said, return. Return. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share this word today as we open this altar for prayer. Pray, God, that you draw to the altar and minister to every heart that's under the sound of my voice, God. Lord, you know where we stand. You know what we're facing. You know what we've been through. God, we pray that you'd help us today. Lord, help us to come before you with broken hearts, God. Let us to return unto you. Hallelujah. Help us to return unto you, Lord, that you may return unto us, O oh God. And Lord, instead of judgment, send us a blessing. Help us, Lord. Help us to be faithful. Help us not to be given to folly. Help us, Lord, to, to live by faith and not by fear. Help us to honor you with everything that we do. Lord, we ask your blessings as we gather in this altar for a season of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join us in the altar for a season of prayer as they sing this morning? Lord, prepare me Be a sanctuary Pure and holy Tried and true With thanksgiving I'll be a living Sanctuary For you Oh Lord, prepare me Be a sanctuary Oh